Saturn 1 1D Quarterly Film Report, number 21, covers progress during the period July, August, September, 1964. The leading event of the report period was the successful launch and flight of the seventh Saturn, SA-7. SA-7 booster checkout at Cape Kennedy was slowed down in early July when the eight H-1 engines were removed for LOX dome replacement. MSFC decided to replace the dome after investigating the stress corrosion crack that appeared in the dome of engine number seven. Rocketdyne's Neosho, Missouri plant performed the dome replacement. The remainder of the checkout was routine, except for two brief delays by hurricanes. SA-7 countdown started in the early morning of September 18th. Liftoff occurred at 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The payload of boilerplate Apollo spacecraft and flight missions were very similar to those of SA-6 successfully launched last quarter. The launch vehicle contained minor changes made to improve overall performance. SA-7 flight objectives included retesting of vehicle propulsion, structural guidance and flight control systems, and providing additional data on Apollo boilerplate behavior during powered flight. In addition, the spacecraft launch escape system was successfully jettisoned, and the S-4's recently added non-propulsive vent system successfully tested. The purpose of this new vent system is to reduce payload spin and tumble. This was the seventh straight successful flight of the Marshall-engineered Saturn S-1 stage and the third straight successful S-4 flight. The three remaining R&D flight test vehicles will carry the large meteoroid technology satellite recently named Pegasus. For the first time, the ST-124 guidance system platform was in complete control of the entire vehicle. S-4 stage flight was as expected. The boilerplate spacecraft was successfully placed into a low orbit, closely approximating the parking orbit for future manned exploration missions. At Fairchild Hiller, the Pegasus prototype spacecraft is structurally and mechanically complete. However, installation of electronic systems has been delayed because of development problems. As a result, Pegasus A will be launched by SA-9 as an operational engineering test model. Pegasus B, to be launched later by SA-8, will be the first fully flight-qualified meteoroid satellite. Marshall is presently re-evaluating the entire Pegasus program schedule. As a result of the H-1 engine LOX dome problem, SA-9 booster final checkout at Marshall was discontinued for about one month until the engine domes had been replaced. Stage checkout was then resumed and completed late in the quarter. Shipment to Cape Kennedy is scheduled for October. Following successful static firings at Marshall, the Chrysler-built S-18 was shipped back to Michoud, arriving on June 28th. Repair operations and modifications were completed late this quarter. LOX dome retrofit of all engines was also completed. Stage post-static checkout is scheduled to begin in October. The booster for the 10th flight vehicle, S-110, was shipped from Chrysler Michoud and erected in Marshall's static test stand. LOX dome retrofit of the engines was accomplished and preparation for static firing began in early September. On September 24th, the stage successfully completed the first of two flight acceptance firings. Following the second acceptance firing, the booster will be shipped back to Michou for routine modification and repair operations and post-static checkout. S-110 is the last of the Saturn I first stages. At Douglas's SACTO test facility, S-49 underwent a new weighing procedure. In this new program, the stage is covered with a plastic bag. Warm air is circulated around the stage, preventing frost buildup allowing more accurate cryogenic propellant weighing. With this data, a more precise orbital trajectory can be calculated. On August 6th, a successful acceptance firing was performed. The stage was then removed from the stand and installation and checkout of the non-propulsive vetting system were begun. S-49 is presently undergoing preparations for shipment to Cape Kennedy.
On August 28th, the S-48 stage was erected on test stand 2B and acceptance firing test preparations, including cryogenic propellant weighing, were begun. At Santa Monica, S-410 stage checkout is nearing completion. Preparations for acceptance firing is scheduled to begin next quarter. At Marshall, SIU-9 pre-flight checkout was completed in mid-September. The unit is being prepared for shipment to KSC with S-19. SIU-8 component installation continued during the quarter, with checkout scheduled to start early next quarter. SIU-10 structure was removed from storage and component installation started in mid-September. At Marshall, the last phase of the dynamic test program was finished in July, with the successful completion of the SA-9, 8, and 10 vehicle configuration tests. Following completion of the Saturn I dynamic test program, the SA-D5 first stage was shipped to Chrysler Michou for modification to S-1B DF design. The booster has been weighed to determine the longitudinal center of gravity. Necessary ballast will be placed in the stage to relocate the center of gravity to the S-1B-1 configuration. Following the weighing, Chrysler began removing components and tanks. Two tanks, the 105-inch LOX tank and one fuel tank, were shipped to Ling Tempco Bot, Dallas, Texas, for a modification. The components earmarked for the S-1B-DF have been labeled, wrapped, hermetically sealed, and stored. In late September, Buildup of the S-1B-DF stage started with the modified flight tail section, new spider beam, the modified tanks, and the usable SAD-5 components. Also, Michoud Chrysler assembly operations on the S-1B-1 continued on schedule. All eight uprated H-1 engines have been installed. Pre-static checkout of the stage is expected to begin in November. S-1B-2 fabrication operations were completed and clustering began in late September. S-1B-3 fabrication began in July. Tail section assembly operations are proceeding with clustering scheduled for late next quarter. At Huntington Beach, California, Douglas completed installation of additional instrumentation in the S-4B structural test stage. Marshall had requested this instrumentation to provide more complete data in event of a rupture. On July 14th, the stage's liquid hydrogen tank did rupture during hydrostatic testing. The failure caused by an incomplete weld fusion occurred at 34 PSIG, two PSIG less than proof pressure for this test. With this additional instrumentation, enough test data was recorded to eliminate the necessity for additional LH2 tank structural testing. The necessary testing of the thrust structure will be performed with the repaired LOX tank and common bulkhead. Installation of the S-4B dynamic stage was completed in July. Installation of simulated systems and stage checkout is underway. Assembly of the all system stage has been completed and the stage moved into insulation chamber number one. This activity is scheduled to be completed in October. As a result of the Apollo program assessment, the all systems test program will be terminated upon completion of propellant loading tests. The stage has been redesignated as a facilities checkout stage. Assembly of the original facilities checkout stage was completed this quarter. Following insulation of the stage scheduled for next quarter, further work will be stopped and the stage stored until a decision can be made about assigning other program missions to the stage. At Douglas's Santa Monica and Huntington Beach facilities, fabrication and assembly of the S4B1B stages continued. At Huntington Beach, insulation is being applied to the tanks of the first flight stage, 201, with completion scheduled for early next quarter. Tank assembly and proof testing for the second flight stage, 202, are complete. Insulation operations will be in process next quarter. Fabrication and assembly of the propellant tanks and thrust structures for the third and fourth flight stages, 203 and 204, are underway. At the Sacramento test area, Douglas continued preparing for the first S-4B battleship hot firing. At the end of last quarter, Douglas completed installing a J-2 engine on the battleship test stage. Following this, the stage was prepared for cold flow testing. 
The first hot firing is scheduled for next quarter. Other efforts leading to the hot firing included completing checkout of the battleship ground support equipment at the SACTO site. The SACTO Gamma test facility to be used for testing S-4B attitude control engines has been completed. Several engines were received from the TAPCO plant at Cleveland, Ohio, and are being installed on the test stands. The first firing test is scheduled for next quarter. Saturn 1B instrument unit structure redesign, necessitated by revised vehicle loads, was completed in August. Structural units already delivered for the old design will be used for Saturn 1B and 5 tests, not affected by the change. The first redesigned IU structure will be delivered to Marshall next quarter by General Dynamics, Fort Worth, Texas. This unit will be used in the Saturn 1B and 5 dynamic test programs. At MSFC, an IU environmental control system prototype heat exchanger was successfully tested. The heat exchanger will provide temperature control during flight for the IU equipment and for equipment in the S-4B stage forward skirt area. The cooling method utilizes a solution of water methanol, which circulates through the cold plates on which the components are mounted. Also at Marshall, mounting of components on the IU structure for Saturn 1B and 5 vibration tests began in early September and is expected to be completed in October. Fabrication of redesigned structural segments for the Saturn 1B and 5 dynamic test unit began July 1st at Fort Worth and continued throughout the quarter. Contract negotiations are still in progress with International Business Machines, recently selected as prime contractor for the IU. IBM has been authorized to proceed with its efforts in personnel and facilities buildup at Huntsville. At Marshall, testing continued on various ground support equipment for the Kennedy Space Center, such as this prototype S-4B aft swing arm assembly. Also at Marshall, the Saturn System Development Facility is being enlarged to accommodate Saturn 1B ground support equipment and stage simulators. The facility is used for checkout tape development, GSE and vehicle system debugging, and certification of systems integration. The delivery and installation of some consoles is underway and will continue throughout the year. The remaining GSE and flight simulation equipment will be delivered and installed early in 1965. Greater versatility will be provided for Saturn 1B operations by two RCA 110A computers connected in a tandem mode. Also at MSFC, construction of the J2 engine test facility is about 90% complete with beneficial occupancy expected in November. The facility will be used for various test programs using a Marshall-built battleship S-4B unit. Meanwhile, at Rocketdyne at Canoga Park, California, assembly of flexible armor-clad harnesses for all J-2 engine electrical control and instrumentation harness wiring is underway. This will provide the 14 individual J-2 engine harness assemblies with handling and abrasion protection, moisture protection, and short-term fire protection. In a series of successful tests begun last report period, the Rocketdyne J-2 engine has demonstrated its ability to meet preliminary flight rating test requirements for gimballing during hot firing. In summary, July, August, and September were months of significant progress in the Saturn 1-1B program. Highlighting this quarter was the successful flight of Saturn 7 and the successful completion of the Saturn 1 dynamic test program. In the Saturn 1B program, emphasis was placed on contractor efforts. S-4B ground and flight stage assembly continued. Ground support equipment buildup, engine programs, instrument unit assembly, and facilities construction gained momentum.